tutorial number six, I showed you how to set up the audio system of a physis based organ with internal loudspeakers. In this one, I'm going to show you how to set up the system for external loudspeakers. There are numerous reasons for using external speakers rather than having them within the console. In public installations such as churches and halls, external loudspeakers can be placed for the best projection into the space, for good integration of the organ sound with the acoustics of the space, and for appropriate visual and architectural effect. For example, in one recent church installation, the loudspeakers were installed inside this beautiful pipe case. Speakers can be laid out so that different parts of the instrument are spatially separated, as they would be in a pipe organ. In my church, we installed the great swell and pedal divisions in this dummy pipe case facing down the nave, and the choir division behind this chancel arch near the choir stalls. Placing some loudspeakers in an old swell box or changing the way they face can dramatically alter the way they interact with the building acoustics. For example, in this installation the swell reeds radiate upwards at the top of the case, which gives them a more diffuse sound than the diapasons of the grate which face forwards. In domestic installations, if you have the space, External audio allows the speakers to go in more realistic locations. It also enables you to use more or better loudspeakers, and separate loudspeakers can be used for artificial reverberation. This is my home setup, for example, where I have four stereo pairs of external speakers above the console, one pair for each organ division, and four reverberation loudspeakers in the corners of the room, plus a big subwoofer on the floor. Having a lot of independent external loudspeaker channels means that only a limited number of sounds are handled by each channel. This improves the authenticity, enables the sounds to combine more naturally in the air, and supports the natural build-up of ensemble as stops are added. External loudspeakers can be chosen to handle more power than internal ones, which is important for filling public spaces, and subwoofers can handle the very bottom of the pedal range. The baseline system offers four external outputs plus a general output that can be used to feed a subwoofer or a reverb unit. There are also versions with 12 plus 1 or even 20 plus 1 channels with the appropriate expansion module. External out configuration can be selected from the FISIS setup menu and it's down the bottom here, external out configuration. We're working with a four channel system here and you can see that there's a standard mode in which all four outputs are available for routing organ voices. And then there's a general reverb mode in which channels one and two have the organ voices routed to them and three and four take the reverb. If you have, say, 12 channels available, the options shown here will be different. In this case, it's possible to configure four of the channels as antiphonal outputs. There's a choice to have all 12 outputs as main channels, or for 1 to 8 to be main outputs and 9 to 12 to be antiphonal. The effect of this is to create two separate groups of channels, and voices can be routed to one or the other group. This can be used for configuring, say, a spatially separate antiphonal section of the organ with its own loudspeakers. On some organs, these can be switched on and off independently. If you scroll down the Setup menu, you'll find the External Out Equalizer, and this allows you to adjust the tonal balance of each channel individually. Just as I showed you with the internal audio setup, there are five frequency bands with a range of plus or minus 8 dB, and this can be used to compensate for characteristics of the loudspeakers or their placement, for example. The very lowest frequencies of the organ go down to 16 Hz in the case of 32-foot pipes, and reproducing these convincingly requires the use of a high-quality subwoofer. A subwoofer also allows the main loudspeakers to be smaller, 
as they don't have to reproduce the bottom few octaves. A sub would normally be connected to the general output, which carries a mono sum of the entire organ. A subwoofer needs its own amplifier, and this is often built into the unit itself. It needs only to reproduce sound below a certain frequency, and many subs have their own low-pass filtering to ensure this. If your sub doesn't have built-in filtering, the organ's general output can be filtered instead. So in the setup menu, scroll down one further and you'll get to external sub equaliser. And you can see here that it's possible to make the general output either flat, that is unfiltered, or to give it a slope of 12 or 24 dB per octave. You can also alter the turnover frequency of the filter, which determines the point where the subwoofer output begins to roll off. The flat curve would typically be used if you're connecting a sub that does its own filtering, or using the general output to feed a separate reverb unit. The two filtered versions would be for feeding a sub that doesn't have its own filtering, the steeper curve making for a sharper roll-off of high frequencies. As with internal loudspeakers, you can route or pan the organ's voices to audio channels in a variety of patterns, emulating the layout of a typical pipe organ wind chest. If you want to see how this wind chest simulation works, then watch tutorial 6 about internal audio. Wind chest layout simulation assumes that the loudspeakers are laid out from left to right in numerical channel order. As you can see here, the wing configuration with four channels routes audio progressively from output one alone at the bottom of the note range through a combination of two and three in the middle to four alone at the top of the range. You need to consider how your loudspeakers are laid out before you can decide how to route voices to them for the best results. To change the routing, you'd scroll down to external output router in the setup menu and select the division of the organ to adjust and in this case we'll adjust the grate or whatever it's labelled in your region and we then see a list of the stops from that division and select say the first open diapason and you'll see how it's routed in this case as a double cusp between channels 1 and 2 shown here as 1 naught and 2 naught. The mode then selects the type of wind chest emulated or simple C sharp, C or mono routing. And the graphic at the bottom, that's here, is a position indicator that shows the shape of the wind chest layout. So if we change the mode to wing, you'll see that the graphic at the bottom has changed. From and to, on the other hand, show the channels involved. The first digit of from or to shows the actual channel number, while the second one shows the approximate panning position at which the pattern starts and stops. So one naught starts exactly at channel one, whereas one two represents a panning position a bit further towards channel two. And if we change the two value up to four, then you'll see that we're panning between channels one and four. The little lines above the channel number rectangles give you an idea which channels are being used. That's given you a brief introduction to the various ways in which a FISIS-based organ can be configured for use with external audio. With up to 20 main channels available, plus a filterable output to feed subwoofers, it's possible to deal with a wide range of different practical scenarios. Substantial flexibility exists in the routing of voices to loudspeakers and in the equalization of each channel. All this can be done without resort to a laptop from the internal control panel.